Hello guys, welcome back to All About Fire Protection channel. Today's topic is about the calculation of number of cables or contactors inside the conduit. There are two types of um, cables that we are using mostly in construction or in installation of fire alarm. It's either a conductor. When we say a conductor, it's, it's, it's a single conductor or it's a multi-conductor or a cable like what you will see in this illustration these are the sample example of single conductor wires and from the right side this is the example of multi-conductor or what we call cable next slide um we're going to uh, show you the different type of conduit that contractors are mostly using in their um, design or in their ins installation so one type is EMT and the other type is e IMC and the other type is PBC so these three types of conduits are mostly used in construction or in installation of fire alarm now now that we know already the type of cables and conduits that um, we use in construction or in installation of fire alarm, now we can proceed with what is the requirement of NPA 70 um, for uh, the quantity of cables permitted inside conduit. There is a table in NPA 90 like that you will see here in the illustration. This is the table which NEPA stated in the standard. So if you have a one conductor or cable, then the permitted cross-sectional area is only 53%. This is the percentage of the cross-sectional area of the conduit, which is permitted to be filled up by, by a cable or a conductor. So instead of 100%, it will be by standard by the requirement of NPA 70 it's only 53 percent if you have only one cable but if you have two cables then the cross-sectional area of conduit that you can use or you can fill uh, with cable or conductor is only 31 percent then more than two cables the cross-sectional area is reduced to 40 percent we will uh, explain it further in, in our example so you can understand this is the same with what I had explained in the table so these are the sizes of the conduit in this example this is the table um, um, used by any use in NPA 70 so this is the sample of table for EMT conduit so these are the different size of conduit one half three port one and like what we discussed before earlier uh, one wire you can only use 53 percent of the total area of the conduit if you have two wires then you can only use 31 percent then if you have more than two wires you can only put, uh, use only 40 percent of the total area of your conduit so so this is where these values are derived you will notice let's say for example the total area cross-sectional area of your conduit is 0 0.304 what will happen is if we will calculate it let's say the 31 percent 0.31 of let's say for one half size how much is that 0 0.304 that is the total area of your one half size conduit emt so what is 31 percent of that 0 0.304 it will give us 0 0.094 so uh, that's why in this in one half for two wires this is where this values that i is. so this is what it means for one wire 53 percent of the total area of the conduit only you can use for cabling and so on okay now for the sample calculation the first step is to determine which type of conduit we are going to use in a project in this example we're going to use EMT 
and which size it's one half. Second step is to determine the number of conductor or cable inside the conduit. In this example, what you will see in the illustration is only one. So we have only one number of con uh, conductor. And if we will refer this one to the table, like what we discussed earlier, in one cable, we're only going to use or consider 53% of the total area of the conduit. That's why here it's given as 53%. So now the next step is determine the total cross-sectional area of conductor or cable. So let's calculate now this area of this cable. In this example, we have a number 14 American wire gauge conductor where the diameter is 0 0.109 inch. So, getting the area of the conductor or a circle is uh, pi times d squared over 4. So, we calculate for that your pi is 3.14 times what, how much is your diameter? 0.109 squared of that divided by 4. And this will give us a total of 0 0.0093 square inch as the total cross-sectional area of our cable, which is one cable on one conductor only. Once we already calculated the total cross-sectional area of our conductor, then we can go to the step number four. Step number four is just to divide the total cross-sectional area of the conductor divided by the cable from 100% cross-sectional area of our conduit. So, and multiply it to 100% to 100 to get the percentage. Let's calculate this. So, what uh, what is our total cross-sectional area? It's already calculated, 0 0.0093. And what is the cross-sectional area of conduit? 100%, considering 100%. What is the size of our conduit in this project? It's one half. Let's check. One half size, okay, and the area, 100%, considering 100%, is 0 0.304. So, that total cross-sectional area of our conductor will be divided by 0 0.304, which is the cross-sectional area of our conduit. And multiply that by 100, it will give us 3.07%. So comparing this uh, this value from our requirement from the table, from again from the table, for one wire should not exceed 53%. So our calculation is only 3.07%. It means that uh, this one number of cable is permitted to be uh, installed inside the conduit. And in our next example, we will see uh, these examples are, there's a lot of cables inside, okay? There's four numbers of conductor. Same step, first we have to um, check which type of conduit we're going to use. It's the same, it's EMT. Second one is to determine the number of conductor or cable. Here, in our example, now it's four. So from the table, what is the requirement if we have uh, four numbers of cable? Here, it's over two wires. It will be in this category. So the requirement is if you have more than two wires, where in our example is four wires, the requirement is only 40%. So this is where we derive this 40%. It's for the table. So it means the maximum fill that we can uh, consider in the conduit is 40% of the total cross-sectional area of your conduit only. Then the third step is, again, determine the total cross-sectional area of our conductor. Okay, in our example, it's number 8 American wire gauge conductor. This is the size. The diameter is 0 0.213. So let's calculate this one. To get the area of the detector, again, it's pi times d squared over 4. 3.14 times what is the diameter? It's 0.213 squared over 4. This will give us 0 0.0356 inch squared. 
as the uh, cross-sectional area of one conductor, but we have four. So multiply that by four, the total cross-sectional area will be 0 0.1424 square inch. Now that we know the total cross-sectional area, we can go now to the fourth step. We will just divide this one by the total cross-sectional area of the conduit. Again, the 100%. But in this example, it's one half again. So it will be the same. One half, uh, the total area, considering 100%, is 0 0.304. So divided, uh, divide that total cross-sectional area by 0 0.304, which is 1.24 divided by 0 0.304 and multiply that by 100, this will give us 46.84%, which is what is our requirement. It should not exceed, shall not exceed 40%. So it means you cannot choose one half EMT conduit if you have four number of this size of cable. Then we have to go on the next size. That is the requirement. So instead of one half, we will uh, use three port instead. For the other type of conduit, which is let's say PVC or flexible metal conduit, we will use table for each type of um, conduit. So this is the table for PVC example, and this is for flexible metal conduit. And let's say if our conduit is IMC, this is the table for IMC. Same procedure will follow. That's what we discuss in EMT. Okay, that sums up our topic for today. If you have uh, any question, just leave your comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. Goodbye.